Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, it's very simple, we are going to be trying to get a Kerbal into orbit and return that Kerbal back safely to the ground, uh, or water. And first we're going to have an uncrewed test of the asteroid system and then if that works we will launch a Kerbal on the next one. We have both of them queued and so let us just warp to completion on that. I guess I should uh, quickly check that I have the right contracts. So I'll do that after I finish reconditioning the launch pad. You see that the asteroid will take 57 days to complete. And then we'll be off. Uh, Venus launch in 292 days possible. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at our contracts. So, a lot of this is very, it is a suborbital space flight, so we're not doing that anymore. Uh, first crewed orbital, well, that's, that's, the, that's the one, it gives us three years. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be enough time. Failure is very expensive in all respects. But we need a periapsis above 150 kilometers, and the orbit has to be... Uh, an hour and 30 minutes. That's pretty specific. Unless uh, we can go above that. Hmm. Well, okay, I mean, the upper stage has maneuvering fuel. It should be able to hit that properly. We'll see. Okay, uh, I'll accept that contract. Anything else? At least we have that contract now. Before, we didn't even have that contract. Venus flyby one if you want to uh, get that done, but not just yet. Okay, so it is a lucrative contract, so that's good. Let's move on. By the way, if it was unclear what technology I was researching, I've got mature orbital rocketry after general construction and then miniaturization here. Okay, warping to completion of the uncrewed asteroid. Okay, uh, let's warp to daylight. There's no reason to launch it at night. Okay, uh, launch should give me... Ah, yes. Alright, well, we'll keep Jeb in, I guess. That's traditional. No, no, we, we won't keep Jeb in. Oh, dear. Too early in the morning. No, this is uncrewed. Uncrewed. So, um, nobody in. And, uh, launch. Okay, here we are. A marvelous straight stack launcher. And uh, no crew. No crew. And we will see if this works. Alright. SAS on initially. Throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. Well, there's some uh, very, very quick overheating on the capsule itself. That's certainly not what you want to see. Hand it off to Smart ASS. We have an initial pitch program. Good acceleration here. Now remember, once we get to 4Gs, we want to turn off two of those engines. That's going to be a bit... Well, I hope the action grouping worked fine. We'll see. If accidentally we turn off all the engines or something like that, then we'll be in a bit of trouble because I don't know how much Delta V we lose in that case. Hopefully not too much. So this asteroid system is sort of like so using that the launcher has the same name as the spacecraft. So it's the asteroid spacecraft and the asteroid launcher. We are past the speed of sound. Well, very smooth so far. Doesn't look like the overheating marker is still on the capsule. So that cooled off, hopefully. Okay, approximately one more minute. It depends on how long it is once we switch off the engines. 
We're at 2.7 G's in climbing. As you can see, by the time we reach 4 G's, we'll still have quite a lot of Delta V left. Okay, getting ready to cut two of the engines. Okay, two engines out. Alright, successful. We're down to just two G's now. And 53 seconds left in the burn. Now once we ignite that engine, we really do need to get rid of the launch escape system. really don't need that much time to apply this, I think. Stuff to say. The next two stages are pretty long. But anyway, here we go. Three seconds. Stage separation. And ignition. Okay, ignition is good. We have nearly 1G of acceleration right now. Okay, I would really like to get rid of the escape tower. So, uh, will this work properly? Or, well, uh, this is what the uncrewed test is for. I want to see whether it works or not. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, alright, alright. That is well and properly rid of. That's still hanging around, but I guess I'll have to deal with that. Okay, we have a lot of Delta V, actually. We have a lot more than we need. We could have carried a lot more fuel in the payload section, the service module. Well, we're getting a little bit high, though. It's possible that we could just flatten out at this point, or close to it, anyway. Oh, I don't think... Is Smart ASS is having a little bit of trouble with control? Okay, we have to do the dance with uh, SAS again. How long do we have in the upper stage? 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. We're probably not going to need to burn all of that though. Yeah, so we don't have... We have decouplers, but the procedural stack decoupler can't be turned into a stack separator right now for some reason. Uh, maybe I need to unlock the technology for that, so that's why it is still hanging out. I would have made it a stack separator if I could. Okay, we are all flat. We're creeping up on G-forces again. 2.7 G's, but the engine is out. Stage set. And... Ignition. Now it looks like these guys are extended, so it's alright. But it still says Commutron 16 cannot deploy when stowed. I assume those are the ones up here. I think again Smarty SS is having a little bit of trouble here. Uh, cannot engage SAS. Oh, uh, this, this one doesn't have an SAS module, huh? Hmm. Well, uh, Smarty SS seems to be able to get around that. So we have control through the gene, uh, Able Avionics Core, sorry. But the Able Avionics Core doesn't have an SAS unit. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure that's necessary, really. But, okay, uh, we'll have to slap some sort of SAS unit. But once, uh, that's fine, considering we'll have a pilot in. We're not going to change this at all. We'll, uh, we'll keep the Able Avionics package on even if we're launching uh, Kerbal 
So the Kerbal will be in, and then we will have SAS like that. So we'll, we'll just use Smart ASS on the assumption of that. So interestingly, I've put solar panels here. Hmm. Oh, that's because this thing can deorbit itself, right? It's got multiple ignitions, yeah. Okay. Or it can act as a satellite. I think I was going to boost it up and make it act like a satellite. I think we have like about a thousand meters per second to spare in this stage. Okay, we are about to pass apoapsis. This is all quite nominal. Okay, less than one minute remaining. Looks like our apoapsis is going up, so I have to pitch higher. Need that to come down to meet where we're at. Okay, our 27, 28, 29, 30. One hour, 30 minutes, 5.11 seconds. Now, it won't say that I'm crude, obviously, but uh, completing orbit. Oh, okay, uh, we have to actually finish the orbit of an hour and 30 minutes, I see. So, but it at least sees that I'm in an acceptable orbit, so that's good. Okay. Alright, so, um, let me get the solar panels here out. Let's separate. And these guys are out. I don't know why it says Commutron 16 cannot deploy when stowed and it's very persistent about when they have deployed, actually. Okay, so, um, forward. Okay, we seem to have control here. Very good. And the spacecraft is free. Off it goes. It's got uh, 403 meters per second of delta V on those little thrusters. That's the little thing that we've got attached to the top. I guess we'll activate the thrusters. They have infinite ignitions, so just pre-activate them. Uh, now, if I press the space bar again, that's probably going to... So, uh, how about I just activate them? Oh, they are activated. That's weird. Hmm. Let me throw some. Okay, they are activated. <laughs> Just wanted to check uh, since their fuel isn't showing here. Alright, I guess hydrazine doesn't show like that. Okay, let's take care of the other part. This, this part seems quite placid. Uh, no, no, no. Right. Okay, well, actually. Uh, now that, that this has let go of the payload, it's got 3,000 meters per second of delta V. That's pretty impressive. Potentially, it could go to geostationary orbit, but we're not launching out of... Well, we could launch out of an equatorial location pretty easily, and then maybe we could get to a geostationary orbit. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's try that. Mm. It's got enough hydrazine, I think. Okay. Oh, uh, right. No operational SAS unit. Well, now that we don't have uh, the crew capsule on, I'm not going to pretend like I have an operational SAS unit. So let me just control it manually. Fuel remains very stable. I trust once we get to the high position, we will be able to see whether it remains like that. But, alright. Okay. All right, um, in this case, how about, wow, well, it's, it's, it's moving around a bit. I hope I'll be able to control it. We don't seem to be aimed at our vessel, so how about ignition? Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. 
problem is I'm trying to control this and aim it at the prograde vector at the same time. Uh oh, no connection? That's weird. Well, that's why we're launching the satellite, but, um... Hmm. I suspect that remote tech is not going to prevent me from shutting down the engine anyway, so I'm just going to continue. Um, because remote tech is a little bit weird these days. So what was I saying? That eh, doesn't matter. Let's just go. Yeah, oh, I'm trying to point out the program vector while taking a look at my app lapses to make sure I hit 35,000 kilometers or so. so. That's why it's a little bit tricky sometimes. Oh, and as we get high thrust weight ratio, it's even trickier. I don't think we're going to get into a very circular... I don't think we have enough for that kind of orbit, really. Okay, I'm going to shut down there because I'm having trouble controlling it anyway. And I have no connection anyway, so it's just going to drift, drift along. Okay, we are far enough away from the rest, the other thing to not be able to jump to it. Uh, this is going to take a few hours to get to its apoapsis, which is not really where I wanted it. So let's go back to our test. Okay, this appears to have no connection, which uh, smart ass isn't is not going to obey anyway. But I'm gonna turn everything off. I just saw. Uh, oh, the vessel is complete. Okay, so our other asteroid is already complete. Oh no, no, that 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 must have been this one only. Okay, stop confusing me. All right, so uh, well we have no connection. Let's just uh, proceed until we have connection, and then I'm going to arm the parachutes. And then over Australia, are we over Australia yet? This is probably Africa, yeah. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, I guess I'll arm the parachutes the same time as I do the retro burn. So the retro burn point is going to be over Australia. Because we'll have connection over there. I mean, reliably. Obviously, we have all these satellites like the asteroid probe there. That could help us out, but just to make sure, we'll uh, make the retro burn point when we have connection over here. Okay. Uh, retro. We'll be on the probe core's own antenna at that point. So we can't use these antennae because we'll be dropping them off. So we didn't complete a full orbit with this. I'm gonna have it come in at 70... well, 74, I guess. It's gonna say 75, but 74 will do just as well. We didn't take too much delta V, as you can see. Alright, so I'm going to now arm the parachutes. So parachutes are armed. And ready to go. I'm also going to unlock the HTP right now. So that Smart ASS can control it if necessary. Um, I'm going to also toggle the scent mode. See how that works for us. Okay, all these things. Uh, actually, uh, if it's the scent mode... Hmm, will I have communication to uh, dispense with the module? That's a good question. Probably our other, the other part of this mission, the asteroid probe, will be over us. Maybe. Unless we have a horizon problem. That's possible. Uh, we should be able to connect through there to dispense with the service module. Let's time warp to that. And it is time to ditch the service module. Now we do have an RCS tank here. So I'm going to unlock that. Should have done that earlier and service module away. Okay, now it is just a pod. And I am going to... I'm going to rely on the pod to orient... Well, hold on, we need to make corrections. The periapsis is now too low. I'm going to allow the craft to orient itself and see how that does. With the descent mode active and everything. And the 74 
kilometers is fine. So uh, descent mode is active, true. And we'll see what happens with that situation with smart ASS off. And in a pinch, if I think things are going badly, I'll turn it back on again and try and control the situation. But let's see how it goes. So it has its own internal antenna. Yeah. All right. Now let's start off at retrograde here and make sure the orientation is right. Hopefully that's good for descent mode. Okay. All right, back off again. We do have communication, so it's all right, and that was the intention. That's why I retroburned that uh, Australia because we would have communication through the through the tough part of the descent just with the capsule's own internal antenna hopefully I'll be watching to see that we don't lose communication throughout all this that'll be important we are now in the atmosphere wow we already have uh, we have already have heating here you can see that got a marker we've got a red capsule and everything now mind you descent mode is supposed to alleviate g-forces to some extent it alleviates heat but only if the conditions are right the trajectory uh, meanwhile that marker is going all the way to the top Now, I, as I understand it, that's not really reliable in realism overhaul, but we're about to find out. Okay, it's just floating away. Let me, let me have Smart ESS handle this properly. Well, we're at 100 kilometers and passing by Louisiana and still no sign of slowing down surface velocity more or less stable increasing okay I think we just heard the service module explode always startles me 90 kilometers we are slowing down we are approaching Florida here our vertical speed is diminishing so we'll be coasting along for a little while burning off speed and we now have flame effects to go along with the already overheated capsule uh, don't know what to make of that marker I'm just gonna turn it off for now it's clearly not doing anything useful the ablator is not ablating very quickly we're still at 199 out of 200. Now that we've got some flame effects, maybe turning off Smart ASS will make the scent mode do its thing. Let's see. I actually wanted you to tilt a little bit more like this. Yeah, I'm not too sure the center of mass is really off. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it. I'm just gonna keep it retrograde. I mean, it should be pretty decisive. I mean, what would happen if the center of mass was really off? Uh, we'd see a lot more burn of the hydrazine and HTP because Smart ASS would constantly have to fight against that. I mean, there's a little bit of a burn on hydrazine. But if you take a look, the pitch gap is not very much. Looks like there is some pitch thing going. So let me, I hate to risk this, but let me turn Smart ASS off and see which way it goes. It's going the opposite direction as I thought it would. Not by much though. Yeah, 
Better to just keep it retrograde if that's all it's going to do. Okay, taking off physical time warp. We now have no connection. At 70 kilometers, we're still above 7,000 meters per second. Well, now we're using some uh, serious... serious RCS thrust in order to keep orientation. But do I dare try and figure out whether... Descend mode is actually doing its job now by turning it off, by turning Smart ASS off. I mean, just gonna roll a bit. Back so the back so that the horizon is up. Well, I mean, I can manually do the descent mode thing, I suppose. No, well, not without SAS. Well, I guess I could using the s thing. Anyway, uh, this is working out pretty well so far. Let's see, we're only at 2 Gs right now. It does apparently want to roll a bit. I'm just gonna toggle the scent mode off. Maybe it is doing something right now, but I don't think it's doing anything useful. Is that off now? Oh right, no connection. I can't toggle the scent mode off. One rare thing that actually obeys the whole remote tech thing. Not much ablation going on. We've only lost six units out of 200. Looks like a bit above seven Gs. I'm surprised it's going up still, actually. This is not what I expected. Now above eight Gs, potentially. All right, what was the peak? 8.1 G's. Bit harsh. We could try descent mode when the Kerbal is in. And I'm not entirely confident in it. I think Jeb can deal with 8.1 G's. Okay, Drogue shoot out quite early. That probably wouldn't survive in... Oh, it didn't survive. <laughs> uh, that... I, I didn't plan for that to go out that early. I, there must be a number wrong or something. Or uh, it must have been I didn't uh, apply to symmetry. I must have uh, just had that one and it didn't apply to its symmetry partner over here. Maybe. Something like that. Yeah, I think the default is like 30 kilometers. That would make sense. Okay, now we're getting into the area where I really meant for the parachutes to deploy. Let's see how it goes. Fair space. Yeah, it's about. Yep, there we go. Three parachutes out. And certainly our velocity is not so much that they should have any problems carrying this down. Okay, let me just turn Smart ASS off at this point. Full parachute deployment. We're down at 3.1 meters per second. Very gentle. No problems. In fact, it's safe to say that uh, this capsule will probably survive with just one parachute. So plenty of redundancy. I won't. Uh, I won't bring back the other asteroid back into the VAB. I'll just change the parameters of the parachute on the launch pad. No point uh, making an official edit of it. Oop, oop, I shouldn't have had time warp on. Okay, well, it's, um, well, it seems to be under the water, actually. I better recover it, otherwise, Kerbal will probably delete it. Being under the water is not a good thing. Okay, uh, yeah, it's under the water fully. Hmm. Kill rotation, please. No, I think it's actually forcing it. I don't know. No, it's, it's maybe stabilizing. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of a problem recovering it. But altogether successful, it's tough to gauge the real heat situation. 
Okay, well, we got some science. Recovery of vessel, return from curb in orbit, and we got some funds back. Always helpful. So now let's take care of the other piece of it, the little satellite, the ComSat that we left behind. Okay, well, there's no avoiding that this is going to end up in sort of a sloppy orbit, but I'll take what I can get. At least it'll be helping out with communications, which is patchy at the moment. And of course, if it was a spent stage, it would have just been discarded otherwise. How's the fuel? Well, it should be very stable after all the turning we just did. Smart ASS seems to be having more trouble than normal. Hold on. Uh, where does the thing prograde is exactly? It looks like I'll have to do it, which is dangerous. Considering this thing's going to have 5 G's of acceleration once I th turn on the engine. So, 10 seconds worth of ignition. Let's see if I can keep it uh, steady for that much. Alright, ignition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not really. Okay. Alright, almost a 12 hour orbit. And that's about where I want it. Now we don't have SAS. Um, can you please, please kill rotation? Please. I'll give it some time. Then we'll have a nice stable communication satellite. If we can just hold it there. Why is it going all the way over here? There's persistent rotation, so I can't just do time warp or anything to stabilize it. Okay, forget it, forget it. Um, uh, it it's, it's okay. It'll be okay. Okay, well, uh, I guess we're going to try and send Jeb up next. General construction technology is completing in 12 days, though, so that's the first thing. So we'll get that done. But then after that is going to be Jeb's asteroid. Okay, here we go. Jeb Kerman on the asteroid. We'll try and do everything exactly the way we did it last time in the hope that will lead to the exact same result, which is the capsule splashing in the ocean and then being recovered. But uh, here we go, throttle up, SAS on, jab looks ready, local control, all right, ignition, and launch. And up he goes, aiming for orbit, an hour and a half orbital period. Capsule again having an overheating indicator as it did on the previous launch, so we'll, we're well on our way and to matching that launch's profile. Going to activate Smart ASS. The overheating indicator on the capsule is off and we are continuing on. Jeb is looking as confident as he always is. We are past the speed of sound now. Seven kilometers in altitude, 50 seconds into the flight. 40 kilometers, 3.8 Gs, getting ready to switch off those two engines. Okay, two engines out. Okay, confirmed, two engines out. Now generating two Gs of acceleration. 15 seconds left in the stage, we're back up to 2.8 Gs. Plenty of time to apoapsis. We'll try and uh, keep, well, there's no point in trying to keep apoapsis down, an hour and a half orbit will bring us to a fairly high apoapsis either way. Less than 10 seconds left. We will be trying to fulfill this contract this time and it does read one Kerbal in. Gotta make sure of that. You never know with these contracts. 
Okay, last second of burn. Stage set. Okay, ignition. Okay, we have good ignition on the second stage. This is an LR105 series sustainer. Okay, let's bring down the escape tower assembly. And while acceleration is still a bit low, let's toss that off. It's pretty heavy. Okay, very good. And it is off and away. Uh, we seem to be deviating, and that's because Smart ASS is not controlling us properly, so hold on a sec. There we go. Now, can it try that again? Maybe. Two more minutes left in the stage. Everything seems to be going fine. Don't see any problems with our trajectory. We should be able to make the target orbit as long as there is no issue with the third stage. 20 seconds to go. The vehicle is now producing 2.3 G's of acceleration. Our apoapsis is approaching 300 kilometers. And uh, we'll probably keep it approaching that. Try and keep it to about 300 would be good. Okay, stage. And ignition. And we'll have communication devices out. Oh shoot, I armed the parachutes. Hmm, that was not according to plan. That's not a problem. That's not according to plan. Okay, uh, some of the comm devices will not deploy, but the ones I want will. Press the wrong button. Which reminds me that I should fix the parachutes. So, uh, let's see about that info. Yeah, this one had the wrong one. Uh, hold on. Let's have its symmetry partner. Okay. Copy to other shoots. That'll be fine. And let's see that it did. Yes, it did. Okay. Very good. So that's settled. Despite a little bit of a faux pas arming the chutes a little bit early, should be okay. Okay, so this stage is going to end up being a satellite. Let's see uh, where it is in comparison to the other one. The other one is, well, it's way over there. So uh, this this will be pretty good. It'll be a little bit off from the other one, not quite the same orbit. So that's probably ideal. Well, it won't be the same orbit anyway. They won't be. Uh, they won't have the same orbital period, so they'll probably cycle around each other. We are now past apoapsis, but I think I can just keep it straight and level here. We've got less than a minute left to burn. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a little bit of pitch. Twenty-eight minutes. 29 minutes. Eh, just a little bit short. But, okay, I don't even know if we really strictly need to go to an hour and 30 minutes anyway, but, uh, hey, it was a good mark to aim for, so let me just push it there. There we go. That's pretty much close enough, uh, though the coupling will change that quite a lot. So, 315 by 247. All right, solar panels out. Very good. And separation. And ignition of these little guys. And indeed they are ignited. All right, so now a little bit more than an hour and 30 minutes. So while this is uh, out with uh, Jeb, he's going to have to do a full orbit before coming down. I'm going to pop on over to the other one and get it boosted to a higher orbit. 
Now obviously this would not be a good situation, so let me have its RCS uh, sidestep the pod. I guess I could use flight computer, but I hardly think flight computer is any more accurate than Smart ASS. Let's see. So uh, prograde, orient to prograde. Eh, it might work this time. Uses a lot of fuel though. I think we're pretty safely away from the t the pod, so I'm going to go. Yep, away we go. Well, if the engine gimbling uh, flight computer seems to be able to handle a little bit better, it's not using the hydrazine now. I'm going to aim for a slightly more circular orbit. I think I'll go to 20,000 20, kilometers instead of aiming for originally trying for 35,000 but ending up at 32 with the other one. Okay, that'll do. So it'll take six hours to get out there. We can't switch like that. So let's switch like this. So here we are with Jeb. Let's see what Jeb can do as far as science. Okay, crew report. Definitely. Just above Earth's waters. Let's transmit that data. Oh, no comm devices on this vessel. Well, something's wrong there. Oh, well, maybe we aren't in. Let's see. We were not in signal range. Let's wait until we have acquisition. Okay, now we have acquisition. Let's try that again. Yeah, transmit. Okay, that works. We can also analyze, well, analyzing telemetry doesn't do anything for us. Can EVA, he can't EVA yet, we haven't unlocked that. So I guess just, uh, just the crew reports we'll have to do. Water, water, water. Oh, desert. That's what I wanted. Transmit data. Okay, there's just grasslands all the way, huh? No, oh, there wasn't even a shores there. It went straight from grasslands to water. Okay, let's complete the orbit. 35 more minutes. Oh, but, uh, yeah, let me just not get any more biomes this time. 28 minutes. Okay, orbit complete. What did it say just there? Oh, return home. We need to return home now. Okay, fair enough. Next crude speed record, we'll need to send a Kerbal out to the moon. Okay, so we'll retro above... Australia as before. No, we're going to be actually over northern Australia. Not really hitting much land. And indeed, it looks like uh, the horizon's in our way as far as connecting through to that location there. I guess we'll start the retro... well, it, let's have him splash down further over the Atlantic rather than risk Jab coming down over land. Okay, retrograde, RCS on. This RCS should be locked, so no problems there. Okay, we seem to be oriented fine, so retro. Okay, 74 kilometers. Again, we're just going to try everything as close to what we had before as possible. Okay. So once again, we will uh, decouple this over to Pacific, the service module, I mean. Okay, let's have it turn to retrograde again. Well, we're definitely over to Pacific. We're connected through Southern California there, Vandenberg. Okay, very well. 
separating the service module. Service module is away. We will unlock the RCS fuel up here. And there we are, back to 74 degrees, uh, 74 kilometers, sorry. And I'm gonna give it a few more puffs to make sure it's a little bit less severe than the test was. Hopefully. Alright. Okay, we have now reached atmospheric interface. Capsule is immediately heating. Great. And we know that that overheating marker will probably max out. And we hope that uh, it will have as little effect as it did last time. I'm going to rotate the capsule to make sure it's hatched side up like it was on the test. Well, now at 119 kilometers approaching the Gulf of Mexico here. This is the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, yeah, that bar is, uh, is now filled. I do have 2x time warp active. I think I'll keep that up as long as I did for the test. Well, cross your fingers, folks. It's never nice to see that bar filled. But that was how the test worked out, too. So, Okay, we are now below 89 kilometers. We are getting flame effects. Uh, the service module has exploded. As usual, that gave me a little bit of a shock. We seem to be passing by Haiti here, the Dominican Republic there. Uh, that is the southern end of Cuba. So, yep, yeah, very Caribbean. I guess if I wanted to give it some positive pitch, I could, and that might soften the Jeep forces for Jeb. Let's try a little bit. Let's see what we can do. It's now taking more than half of our pitch authority to keep the 5 degree up angle. I'm going to reduce that. I think our effort to slow down a bit sooner has worked out for us. So that little bit of up pitch seems to have done its... well, some trick. We'll see. Last time it was 8.1 G's. We'll see what it ends up being this time. We're at 65 kilometers. I've been maintaining a one degree up pitch just to see how long I could, but I don't think I can anymore. My pitch authority has run out, so I'm just going to flatten out here. We're at 50 kilometers and now over 4 G's, approaching 5. Under 40 kilometers and we are nearing 8 G's here. But it sounds like the forces are abating and indeed at uh, 35 kilometers it looks like we are through the worst of it 2300 meters per second we are currently at orbital velocity around Kerbin and dropping though pressing F3 7.8 G's so uh, 0.3 G's less not a huge difference but uh, at least it's something Jeb looks fine. Okay, getting ready for parachute deployment. And there they all go. We have four parachutes deployed as planned to 2.8 meters per second. Well, he's hardly hitting the ground at all at that speed. And barring any water related mishaps. And I'm going to reduce time warp to avoid as much of that as possible. He should be fine. Okay, come on, let me recover. I have to be careful not to click space center in case Kerbal decides it's no good. Let me uh, have Smart ESS kill rotation again like we did last time. Hopefully that'll help. Point 0.4 seems to be the most. Point 0.3. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, well we got point 0.3 science for the recovery. Uh, we got 87.6% of the total value, about the same as what we got from the test. 
Jeb got one experience point and advanced to level one. No additional reputation, oddly enough. Uh, but we did it. Uh, let's verify the contract is done. Contract is complete. This is the most historic day. The first spacefarer has returned to Earth. We got the completion rewards. We got the we got the um, reputation points from that. Okay, so that is done. But we have one little bit of a business to take care of, and that's the other portion of the mission. Okay, here we are. Um, I think Flat Computer is once again trying to turn it to prograde. That, that that's okay. That's what we want. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we're a little bit past apoapsis. You can see we're headed down. We're about oh 200 kilometers away from apoapsis in terms of altitude, but we might as well go ahead and circularize right now. Let's check our our fuel flow is very stable. Okay. So ignition bit of a jolt there okay so this was actually an even tighter orbital period nine hours instead of almost 12 hours we've got good good electric charge generation and so this one is pretty much set at least that's how I'll call it so the two satellites we put up uh, one in this orbit and then the other one in that orbit that larger orbit there they're inclined with respect to each other, but they are in communication with each other for now, though that won't stay the case. Uh, one will move to the other side uh, because they are in different orbital periods. But hey, uh, since they were just going to be spent stages anyway, it's not bad. Uh, you might talk about uh, clutter in space, but these will be far more useful than some of the other things I've got orbiting closer to the planet. And they're relatively out of the way. Okay, so on that note, a completely successful session in Kerbal Space Program, uh, unusually enough, but that's because we did some testing, and uh, that's good because we risked the Kerbal's life, and we brought Jeb back safely. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.